Welcome, friend. I am the cartographer, maker of maps. And for all my long years of collecting and creating maps, of all sorts and all kinds, I have learned much of this world I call home. I have seen countless wondrous places, and have heard tales of old of them be told. Tales that I would very much like to share with you today as the rain falls on the roof of this old house. Tales of myth and magic, of history and lore, of lands close to my heart where I have traveled the paths that run through the familiar fields, but also of far off places that others than me might call their home. So if you'll allow me, I'd like to take you on a journey for today seems as good a day as any to make a new map of this world and all its realms. May it guide you on adventures to come as I tell you my tales of Timion. It seems the summer sun has battled this morning's rain and won. Very well. The sun shines as we set out on our first adventure. But where to begin? The first drop of ink seals the fate of any map forever. And I think the best place to start this one is where it ends. The walls of the world. Up from the seas they rise, terrifyingly colossal and utterly insurmountable. No one in the history of this world has ever seen what lies beyond and returned to tell the tale. Though one thing is certain, they encompass everything. Now, from the edge of Timion, we'll go to the heart of it, to our first land. The central continent. Archeon in the east and in the west my homeland, the continent of Sestian. It is the birthplace of the folk of men and both the largest and most diverse continent of all. Countless towns, keeps and castles are scattered throughout the most beautiful landscapes. Its seemingly unending coastline, from the red cliffs in the south to the white beaches in the north, holds hundreds of hidden coves where the water shimmers like silver in the light of the sun. In the north of Sestion, rivers flow freely to the sea from icy lakes that spring from the sundering range. Mighty do the snowy peaks rise above the landscape and to their east, a sprawling woodland thrives. Amidst the rolling foothills and fields of this land, remnants of a rich past remain. For Sestion was once divided into six mighty kingdoms, the palaces of which still stand strong to this day. Sestion's capital, Kyrth, is one of the largest cities in the world, and a center of wealth and trade in goods both common and rare. But Sestion is also home to some of the most desolate places in Timion, with strange folk inhabiting them. Lawless cities are built in the remains of times long past, as a home for those who could not find one elsewhere. For that is what Sestion is, a home not just to men, but to everyone. To dwarves, and even to the elves who came here from the east. Which brings us to the second of the two central continents the homeland of the elven folk, Archeon. More than a thousand years ago, Wilbur the Mariner crossed the seas of pain, which had swallowed countless sailors before him. Many miles to the east he found a new coast, of a land yet uncharted. Sailing along the desolate shoreline, he thought the land to be barren, deserted, empty. Yet, in the heart of Archeon, 
a world lay hidden. Now to me this land is a place of dear friends and first meetings. And while the coastal cities of men are something to behold, the true beauty of Archeon lies further inland. Nestled between the mountains of ash in the east and the sea in the west it lies. The long forest, where falling leaves guide you home along hallowed streams and ancient trees to the heart of the wood. A place where little things matter most, for everything grows. This forest is home to many magic things, such as the wondrous pool of time. But most magical of all are the elves, for sharing Archeon's beauty with us. And although evil has tried to separate us in the past, the central continents are united now, as two halves of a whole. Now, which of the outer continents shall we visit first? I think, yes. The land of storms, of rock and stone. Homeland of the dwarves who dwell under the mountains, where in ancient times the stone giants roamed. Findikfil. In the far northeast of the world, this wild land rises from the Sea of Wind. Men sailed here not long after Wilbur discovered Archeon. In the Horn Bay they came ashore, on windswept fields of grass. And the land they found was far from uninhabited, for dwarves had lived here for many ages. Even wild men, who had come here in forgotten times, were spread throughout the vast landscape of Finnigfield. A landscape where ruins of bygone days lie hidden. Remnants of a time where things much bigger than dwarves and men ruled the continent. But these days, it is precisely them who rule here. The dwarves, most cordial and courteous. Who hewed cities from stone in their mountain homes and even bent rivers to their will. And the humans, whose civilization has pervaded the vales and meadows that were once wild. Though the clans of the Nordmen, barbaric as they may be, keep mostly to the forests, more in harmony with nature than those who serve the masters. The great storm houses who have tried to tame this thunderous land are descendants of the pioneers who came here a thousand years ago. And though they have tried, Finnigfield is not so easily tamed. It has always been a dangerous place, filled with perils beyond count. And yet, the unkempt beauty you will find here outweighs it all. So where to next? I think our journey will lead us westward. But it is getting late, and the light is swiftly fading. We will resume on the morrow. There. Now where were we? Ah, yes. Ambarna, as this continent's inhabitants call it. In the common tongue we call it Ambarona, but its meaning is the same. The land of gold. I must tell you now I do not know much of this land besides its main features. The Silm, the gold-dealing people native to this realm, are a most reclusive and solitary folk. They share only little of their homeland, though I have been there myself, albeit only once. And it was truly magnificent. Also known as the land of a thousand lakes, Ambarna is most well known for its natural splendor, and, of course, its mysteries. North of the Golden City, beyond the Auric Mountains, lies the Veiled Valley a beautiful yet deadly labyrinth of chasms shrouded in eternal mist. Entrance is forbidden, for the Silm deem it too dangerous. But beyond the mountains, peaceful fields of green and gold arise, where wildflowers sway gently in the wind. 
Though there is one thing missing here, for the continent of Umbarna is almost entirely treeless, an earthly scar left by a grievous history. A history of war. A history that takes us south. For when we speak of scars, there is one place marred more than all others in Tumian. Most call these lands the Broken Isles, but its rightful name is Maratos. To the south of Ambarna lies a chain of islands as mournful as the events that formed them. For Maratos was once a green and lush place, full of life and beauty. But the land was shattered thousands of years ago when the warring forces of two opposing nations met in the heart of the island, tearing it asunder. An event we call Cataclysmus. It was the concluding culmination of a millennia-long war between the Silm of Ambarna and the Hedum from the land south of Maratos. The legion of the northern army was bred for one thing only, to destroy the Hirm once and for all. But when the troops clashed, a power was unleashed that was too mighty, too terrible. As the blue of sky turned to red, a blazing light scorched the land. When the trembling ground tore open, the seas themselves arose, wiping entire lands off the map, forever. Now, a ruined land is all that remains. But what of the Silm's opposers? Their home is the land we call Berenost, but its inhabitants call it Zurak. Now I know I said Ambarna was a mysterious place, but even less is known of Zurak. The southernmost continent belongs to a people even more isolated than the Silm, the Hirum. A jagged, rocky coast encompasses a mountainous landscape covered almost entirely in a lush green jungle where the cities of the Hirm are hidden. Many wild streams flow from the heart of the Forest of the Father out to sea. This land is home to both the longest river and the largest river delta in the world. Nature truly thrives here, and life in these parts is ancient. Some say it even began here. Legend speaks of something hidden in the heart of the Black Mountains, a true primordial wonder of this world and a god to the people of Zurak. Deep within the mists of the Valley of Life it stands. The Allfather. It was the first tree, and all trees are its children. But that is where my knowledge of this land sadly comes to an end. Which brings us now to our final destination. In the southeast of Tumion lies the land of the dragons, though the days when they were the only ones living there are long over. Its name is Avanima, which roughly translates to home in the sky. In ancient times, nomadic shepherds from the south of Sestion were carried here on the backs of dragons. When those first people saw the land emerging from the clouds, they were convinced that this was a paradise high above the world. Well, they were right about one thing, this land is a paradise. From the southern Pamao Islands, where the sea is more blue than the sky, to the lush bays in the east and the dense mangrove swamps in the west, and to the forgotten isle in the north, where... Um, Yes, well, it, it seems I've forgotten what is there, but I'm sure it's wonderful. And to the countless little islands where remote temples lie hidden from sight. This land is a gorgeous, prosperous one, where the snowy peaks of flaming mountains rise from the valleys, where trees blossom in flowers of white. Along the coasts, age-old cities thrive. But in the heart of Avanima, a true sanctuary remains. Amidst the yellow mountains, the land still belongs to the dragons. At their center, along the foot of the dragon's peak, numerous temples rise from the mists. It is a gathering place for all dragons. For this is where Dragashu, the father of dragons, last sat claw upon this earth before he fell many thousands of years ago. Deep under the ruined coast of the Winged Lake, 
Dragashu lies buried still. Though it is foretold that he will rise once again and bring with him the ending of this world. That concludes this continent, and with that, this map. Although it is a perilous one, this world is my home. And what a beautiful one it is. I would like to welcome you once more to Timion, and ask that you tell me what you would like to explore first.